All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's class. So I am going to start sharing my whiteboard in a minute. All right, so let's get started with today's class. Today we talked about inverse matrix and we solved an a matrix equation using inverse matrices. So let's first talk about what an inverse matrix is. Okay, so according to what you have in your textbooks, an inverse matrix One second, ladies and gentlemen, just finding my book real quick so I can give you guys that definition of what an inverse matrix is. So according to your textbooks, we can, divide, uh, we can um, define an inverse matrix um, by first identify what an identity matrix is. So basically an identity matrix is a matrix with ones on the main diagonal and zeros elsewhere. That's what an identity matrix is, basically ones and zeros. As if A is any n by n matrix and I is the n by n matrix identity matrix, then AI equals A. So basically, what an identity matrix, if we have a two by two matrix, what an identity matrix is something like this. One, zero, zero, and one. And basically what this is saying is that an identity matrix is AI, which is the determinant of I, equals I. So the determinant of an identity matrix is itself, basically is what it's saying here. And the other thing that if we had a 3 by 3 matrix, pretty much the identity matrix of a 3 by 3 matrix would be something like this. You'd have ones in the main diagonal, and pretty much everything else would be zero. So this would be zero. This would be zero as well. Zero down here. Zero, zero, and this is what an, a three by three identity matrix is. Basically, um, a matrix that has ones in the main diagonal and everything else is basically zero. Um, the two it says two uh, two n by n matrices A and B are inverse of each other. If their product in both orders is the n by n identity matrix, that is, A times B equals I and B times A equals I. It says an n by n matrix. A has an inverse if and only if the determinant of A is not zero. The symbol for the inverse matrix of A is A to the negative one. So let's see how we solve matrices that, or find inverse of matrices that are two by two. And I took the liberty real quick of writing down the key concepts for you guys. And then we'll see one uh, example one and two very quickly. So basically we have A, B, CD, which is a normal matrix, two by two, it says one over the inverse of, or the determinant of A times D times, or not, yes, times D, negative B, negative C, and A. Now, what this means is that when we're working with inverse, we're going to switch the positions of the A and the D, and obviously invert the signs of the B and the C, respectively. And the inverse the determinant of A is basically, you leave it expressed as A times D, uh, 1 over A times D minus C uh, times B. Because when we're talking about an inverse, we're talking about reciprocal, and uh, hence, most of the time, that's seen as a fraction. So the determinant, this can't be 0, because no fraction can have a 0 as a denomin in the denominator. And basically, we multiply that by the negative B, uh, negative C, and D. So let's look at this example. 
that I went ahead and wrote here uh, for you guys. And the first thing I always recommend is that you label them. So this is A, B, C and D respectively, C and D. And what we're going to do, guys, is we are, first of all, going to simply uh, find the or leave this the determinant expressed. So we're going to say this is going to be 3 times 5 and 2 times 8. Okay, so that is going to be... 1 over 15 minus 16. And we're going to multiply that by the inverse, which means we're going to switch around the positions in the graph. So basically what we're going to do is we are going to uh, switch the positions of the D and the A. So this would be 1 over 16, 15 minus 16 times the a with the the matrix excuse me would now be five because i'm switching the positions of the d and the a so so three would be down here and now we're inverting the sign so this is going to be negative eight right here and this is going to be negative two so after that, what we're going to do is just solve this real quick. So 1 over 16 minus 15 would be 1 over negative 1. And then we multiply that by the matrix that we have, which is 5, negative 8, negative 2, and 3. and 3, and then negative 1 over negative 1 is negative 1, and then 5 times, and, and then we're just going to multiply the negative 1, we're going to do a scalar multiplication and multiply the negative 1 by the matrix, which is 5, negative 8, negative 2, and 3, and then that would be the answer for this. So negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. That would be 8. This would be 2. And then this would be negative 3. And that would be the determinant of this uh, the term excuse me not the determinant the inverse that would be the inverse of this matrix ladies and gentlemen that would be the inverse of that matrix right there It'd be negative five eight two and negative three so it's really simple it's just basically plugging into the formula and working with that now let's look at this one right here let's look at this equation um if you have any doubts, you can always pause and rewind the video. But let's go into example number two where we have a matrix equation. So I'm erasing this, and that way I have the necessary space so that the problem can be done. So I'm going to do this problem a little bit more detailed than you might see it in your textbook. Obviously, there are some things that they assume that you know how to do. And I'm just going to take the opportunity to uh, add a couple of extra steps more as a review than anything else. So the first thing that we're going to do is actually find the inverse of A. So we're going to look for the inverse of A. Okay, so when solving matrix equations, like what we're going to see in this example, the first thing that we want to do is find the inverse of A. So we're going to look for the inverse of this matrix right here. So let's go ahead and do that. And that would be... We have we write we find the determinant or leave the determinant express, and that would be, and we know that this is going to be. And let me just uh, use a different color. We're gonna this is going to be two times four, right here, 
and this is going to be one negative 1 times negative 7. So 2 times 4 we know is 8, so this is going to be 8 right here. And then negative 1 times negative 7 is going to be positive 7, so we know that that's going to be 1 over 8 minus 7. And then the next thing that we're going to do is invert the positions. Remember, and again, this is just a suggestion, uh, label them as A, B, C, and D. And now, if we're looking for the inverse, what we're going to do is we are going to um, invert the positions of the matrices. So this is going to be uh, D would now be 4, uh, negative B, we have a negative 7, so that negative 7 is going to cancel out. It's going to be 7. It's going to be 7. Let me... Um, so let me point that out real quick. So we're going to invert the position. So now the where the A is, we're going to write the 4. And if you notice, it says negative B, but there's a negative 7 already. So the two negatives are going to cancel out, and that's going to be positive 7. So 4, 7. And if I look at the negative 1 down here, same thing. It's supposed to be negative C, but since there's already a negative, two negatives are going to cancel out, and it's going to be positive C. Okay, so again, it says negative 1. It's supposed to be negative C, but since it, there is a negative 1 there, it's just going to cancel out, and you're going to have a positive 1. One last time in case you saw it. So I switched the positions of the D and the A, so now D is going to be 4. The formula says negative B, but there is already a negative 7, so the two negatives are going to cancel out, and that's going to be positive 7, which is what I wrote. And then here, same thing. It's supposed to say negative C, but there is already a negative, so two negatives cancel out, and it's going to be positive C. And then the last uh, number in this matrix is going to be a 2. So we're looking for the inverse. And what we're going to do now is, well, 1 uh, over 8 minus 7, is, which is 1, so that'd be 1 over 1, multiplied by the 4, 7, 1, and 2. And of course, 1 divided by 1 is uh, 1. So in reality, I'm just multiplying 1. Are you doing a scalar multiplication of 1 times 4, 7, and uh 1 and 2, so t equals 1 times 4, 7, 1, and 2. And after I do the scalar multiplication, the final answer, or a to the power of negative 1, which is the symbol for the inverse of a matrix, is going to equal, when I multiply 1, 4, 1 times 4, 7, 1, and 2, that is going to be four, seven, one, and two. Four, seven, one, and two. Now that I have the inverse of the matrix of A specifically, I'm going to multiply this inverse by this side of the equation and this inverse by this side of the equation as well. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. And we're going to say 4, 7, 1, and 2. Let's actually erase all this. Actually, no. no I have some space. So 4, 7, 1 and 2. I'm going to multiply that by A, which is negative 2, or 2, excuse me, 2, negative 7, negative 1. negative 1 and 4. So let's go ahead and do this multiplication real quick, and that way we can speed up a little bit. 
Remember that when you're multiplying matrices, it's row by columns. So you're going to say 4 times 2, which is 8. And then you're going to multiply 7 times negative 1, which is negative 7. So that would be plus negative 7. And that's going to equal to 1. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. 4 times negative uh, 7 is actually negative 28. And you're going to multiply that by 7 times 4, which is positive 28. And this is going to equal to 0. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And we're going to multiply row by column right here. So we're going to multiply 1 uh, times 2. And I don't know. Let me erase that. I just realized I don't know what this is. But it could be a little confusing. Let me erase that. Okay. Let me try that again. And get rid of that mark. All right, here we go. So we're going to multiply now, and we're going to multiply row by column. So this is going to be, I'm sorry. I realize I need another mistake. And let me just fix that. All right, there we go. So we're going to multiply the row. Sorry. Mm -mm. This is a live recording, ladies and gentlemen, so our mistakes are very common. <laughs> Pardon me for this. Let me um, go ahead and fix that. Here we go. So as I was saying, now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So we're going to multiply the row times the column. So that would be 1 times 2, which is 2. And... So row by column, 1 times 2, which is 2. And then you're going to multiply 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. So that would be 2 plus negative 2, which is 0. And then we're going to do it again, row times... Um, columns, so that would be 2 times negative uh, 7, which is going to be negative 14. I'm sorry, 1 times negative 7, which is negative 7, excuse me. 1 right here times negative 7, which is negative 7, and then 2 times 4, which is 8, so that would be negative 7 plus 8. And this is going to be positive 1. So that means that here our answer is going to be the matrix, the resulting. It's actually an identity matrix, which is 1, 0, 0, and 1x. And now we're going to multiply, it. and let me do it on this side right here. Actually, let me use a different color. That way it would be more beneficial. We're going to multiply on the other side. 4, 7, 1 and 2, which is the inverse of A. 4, 4 7. 1 and 2, which is, again, as I was saying, the inverse of the inverse of 
A, and we're going to multiply that by B, which is negative 21 3, 12, and negative 2. So what we're going to do now is the same process, row by column. So we're going to multiply 4 times negative 1. Let me do it on this side. 4 times negative 1, which is going to be negative 84. And then we're going to multiply 7 times 12, which is positive 84. So negative 84 plus positive 84 is going to equal 0. So let me go ahead and just do that right now. 0. And then we're once again continuing with the row times comes. So 4 times 3 is going to be 12. And... Um, 7 times negative 2 is going to be negative 14, so it's going to be plus negative 14. And that's going to equal negative 2. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side, and that's going to be uh, 1 times negative 21, which is actually going to be negative 21. 2 times 12, which is going to be 24, so plus 24. And that is going to equal to 3, so that's going to be the answer for that matrix, 3. Actually, let's see if I can... I think if I write it down here, it's going to look better, not so squiggled. 3. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side, um, and that would be... Um, one, um, one times three is three. I'm sorry. And then two times negative two is negative four. So plus negative four. And that is going to equal negative one. So that is the result of this matrix. And we are now going to say that Um, the result is zero, the result of that matrix. And let me write that here. So we have that uh, one zero zero one x one zero and zero one x. is going to equal zero, negative two, three, and negative one. So we're almost done with that exercise. We still have to find the value of x, but now we know the inverse. So one thing that is uh, good to understand, and we're going to go back real quick to the, uh, the definition of the identity matrix. It says that the identity of A, of, of A equals A. Um, for example... Uh, and again, we're, we were reading that two n by n matrices, A and B, are inverse of each other if their product in both um, orders is the n by n identity matrix. That is, that A times B equals B times A, that A times B is equal to the identity of b times a and n by n or n by if an n an n by n matrix a 
has an inverse if and only the determinant of a cannot be zero. So what that's trying to say, or what I'm trying to say, is that in this case, if we observe the answer that we've gotten once we did the process of the um, of the of um, of this, is that the identity of x, which is what we have here, an identity matrix. The identity of x, because if we were to do the inverse of this, it would equal to 1. If we were to find the determinant, that the identity of x, which is what we have here, an identity matrix, equals the product of the inverse of a times b, which then means, so this right here, what we just found here is the product of the inverse of A times B. So what that means is that what that means is that in this case, because what I got for X is an identity matrix, the value of x is actually going to be 0, negative 2, 3, and negative 1. So again, what I'm trying to say, guys, is that because when we multiplied um, the inverse of a by a, we got an identity matrix then that means that the value of x is actually going to be the product of the inverse of a times b. And let me let me point that out real quick. So what that means is because when I multiplied the inverse of a times a, which is this one, because I multiplied the inverse of a times a and the result was an identity matrix, that means that the identity matrix is actually going to be the re, uh, the actually sorry because when I multiply a uh, the inverse of a by a and the result with it was an identity matrix that means that the value of x is actually going to be the same as the product of uh, the inverse of a times matrix b okay so that's why we got um, that's why our answer or our value of x was 0, negative 2, 3, and 1. So hopefully this explanation was useful as this video. So stay safe, and I'll see you soon.